Hey y'all, good morning, wherever you're tuning in from. Welcome to this session today, displaying cut and fill volumes on gridded surfaces in Civil 3D. So, in our previous session from yesterday, two days ago, we did, this is again, piggyback off that. So what we did in that previous session is we created a volume surface, displayed our cut and fill, colorized it, negative for cut, green for our fill scenario, made a green and red scenario. And then we labeled that surface afterwards. And what we did in that is we labeled our elevations. So our cut elevation. So we have one foot of cut in this location, one foot of fit fill in this location along a gridded surface. And so piggybacking off that, we are going to do a surface uh, labeling scenario where we display the cut and the cubic yardage or the volume that we need for that specific gridded location. So a different way to display things along that gridded surface um, for this scenario. So jumping into Civil 3D, I have a surface created in here. It's just a, this is a parking lot from grading optimization. And bottom line is we have cut in some locations and we got some fill in some locations. So let's go ahead and let's set up a, let's start labeling these, the, this cut, this cut and fill out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my surface, my volume surface. I'm going to go into my surface properties. And I'm going to go into my elevation banding surface style. And I'm going to turn on the grids for it. So right here, notice grid right here. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm also just going to verify what my grid is at. So we always need to check this based on what we're going to label our grid within. If we want it to be in the center of all these grids or just an arbitrary just grid from those surface labels. So Notice right here, my interval is five feet in five feet. So we have a five foot gridded surface created here. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and apply. Okay, apply and okay. All right, now I have my grid created here. Nice grid, five foot interval, nice black square. All right, now let's go ahead and let's create our surface style to work with this. All right, so I am going to head and create an expression here. I'm gonna say create expression, new. No. And we're going to call this five foot by five foot volume um, surface grid. We can make this shorter if we wanted to, longer, just something unique so we know exactly what this is, especially think about the next user that might not necessarily have created this. We could put a description in here, but we're just going to go right into the expression and create the contents of it. So expression little window here, I'm going to grab this guy right here, and I'm going to grab surface elevation. All right, so this is our surface elevation. This is what we did in the previous one. One foot of cut, one foot of fill. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the volume for the region that I'm working in. So five feet by five feet. So multiply this by five, multiply this by five. And now I'm going to throw another parenthesis in here. And I'm going to multiply this because this is surface elevation feet, five feet, five feet. We're going to be in cubic feet. So just to convert this to cubic yards, I'm just going to throw in this conversion here. And this is what this is going to do is we're going to see a cubic yard volume here. All right, we'll say OK. Now we have our expression created. Here's our name down here, our five foot by five foot volume surface grid. Now let's go ahead and create a surface style that will utilize this expression. So I'm just going to go ahead and just grab, I'm just going to edit one of the current selections. You could also create a new one. So this one called spot, we'll just call this five foot by five foot. But oh, not a grid surface, grid surface, volume, I suppose. All right, now getting into our layout tab here, I am going to just plop in that expression I just created. So name, we'll just call this volume surface, surface volume. And I'm gonna go ahead and just change my contents here. I already have it, um, eh. Surface guy. And we're going to plop in our properties here. This is that expression we just created with that name. So remember that unique title. Go ahead into this arrow. Boom. We've got it right over here. And I'm going to leave my precision. We'll keep it to a ten hundred thousandths. Be pretty precise. We'll leave it. One thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop my sign just because notice in the background here we have green, red. We're going to know what's cut, what's fill. You could have negative for your for your cut. But I'm just going to drop the sign so we have positive values for everything. And very important, make sure you hit this arrow because that we have nothing will go across if you don't do that. And I'm just going to just manipulate this a little bit to show there's a little bit more um, contents within. So I'm going to make it V equals 
and then I'm going to say cubic yard right here. I could, and eh, we'll put, I'm going to make it really short to see you yard just so that it's not as much space, but you could, you could put periods and all that in there. All right. We'll say, okay. And I'm just going to zoom in here and we're going to see my preview. So V equals question mark. That's going to be the calculation cubic yards. Now, before we jump out of this, I'm going to change one other thing. I want this to attach to the center of my point. So, yep, we already are set up like that. So I've set to the feature, middle center, the attachment, middle center, right to the center of that point. Okay, cool. I'm going to say apply, and we're going to say okay. All right, now we have our spot elevation created. We could throw this in on a grid. Now, there's one thing I noticed with this is we this grid is starts at a different base point than another the grid we could create with our spot elevation grid. So I want it to be on this grid versus just a base point that's over here in space like we did in that previous one. So what I did, I identified, and I think, you know, I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but this is how, this is how I did it, good old fashioned AutoCAD. So rectangle right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna work with, mm -hmm. and I want you to snap, there we go. All right, and I'm just snapping to this corner here. So I just grab that bottom point. Now I'm going to make a two and a half by two and a half rectangle. So just I'm getting an insertion point in the center of this grid. So dimension right here, and I'm going to set to two and a half for my width and two and a half for my right here. All right, now I'm just going to click and plop this in. And I'm going to hit escape. And now I have my rectangle right here. So just think we're going to project our grid to like a north, northeast direction here. All right. So now initiating the command, annotate tab, add labels, surface, add surface labels. I'm going to do it the long handed way. So we open up this dialog box. And so feature surface, what type of label? We're going to do spot elevations on grid. And I'm going to go and grab my grid surface volume that's five foot by five foot. And now I'm going to say add right here. All right. Now it says select a surface. So we're just going to say enter and grab it from the list. And we're going to want to use our volume surface because that has our elevations different or elevations of cut and fill um, in relation to it. So it's before we use our volume surface. So we grab our volume surface here. And now I'm just going to grab this top left, cor top right corner, which would be the center of this gridded location right here. So boom. And now it says, what's our rotation? So we're working on a, you know, zero and 90. So we're gonna leave our rotation at zero, enter. And what's our spacing? Our spacing is gonna be five feet. We're gonna go five feet in each direction. So five feet in the X, five feet in the Y. And now notice, now when we say like, which specify the upper right hand corner, notice it'll snap based on those intervals. So our starting point's right here. You know, it's like, boom, boom, boom. So I'm just gonna go way out here and way out here just projecting to the northeast and i know it's on the grid that i want because i'm going through the uh, intersection point of each one of the grids and we'll just go out here to say uh we'll go out a little ways boom and notice i get this nice magenta it's a little hard cyan excuse me cyan rectangle so it says change size of rotation it's basically saying do you want to change any of the elements they know it's gonna say enter and now we have our volume for each of these grids here. So we can see volume 1.096, and we can see we have volume 0.7 here, 1.1. So this is our cubic cut in this location, our cubic fill in this location. So very cool to be able to display this on a gridded surface. So hopefully you find this interesting and different ways to manipulate it. Um, and one other thing you could do to this is you could piggyback off our previous session and display the elevation in this surface cell too. So our volume for this grid and our elevation to uh, just to get down to the cut fill location. So just one foot, two foot, uh, things like that. So different ways to display things and hopefully you find this interesting and uh, this is something you implement for your visualization within your designs. So thank you and have a great rest of your week.